We're meeting a potent new voice speaking up for the rights of some of our most vulnerable rangatahi in care. Tupu Ehrlich is part of the Youth Advisory uh, Panel working with the government as they overhaul the care system. What makes Tupu's perspective even more powerful is that he's been in care himself. He says the Crown's promised change before but hasn't delivered, so he's working hard to ensure they do this time. Carmen Pada, he reports. Sick and tired of hearing, um, you know, oh, there's this many in prison, there's this bullshit, you know. Do your job properly. Stop setting us up to fail and then blaming us for failing when you guys are letting us down, not us letting you down. 19-year-old Tupua Ulrich spent 12 years in the care system. His parents failed him and so did child youth and family who took guardianship of Tupua when he was five years old. They're our parents but they're just slack, slack parents. Okay? I mean that, that report even said that um, it, the results were that it's no better, These, that the young people in the care system were no better off with the intervention of child, youth and family. We're in the Dingwall neighbourhood in South Auckland. It's a trust set up in 1927 to help needy children. There are nine residential homes for kids in care and a transition service to help youth who are forced to leave the care system when they turn 17. They're vulnerable, they're most vulnerable, you know, they're young and they're, they're they're exposed to a lot of emotional um, trauma and, and mental trauma, you know, that everything that happens to a young person, especially that young, they take it all in and it affects them in certain ways. Tupua lost count of the number of homes he lived in while he was a state ward, but he has a place here at Dingwall where he advocates for all children in care. Lost would be a good word to use. You've lost all that, those connections with family. They do a lot of work with you individually throughout your time in the system, but they don't make the whānau any better or the home environment any better to return to. So you lose a lot of relationship and you don't really have a family in the end. So it's hard, really hard. Life is tough for state wards, but it's even harder for them when they age out at 17. Civs kids have dramatically worse outcomes as young adults compared to others. Tupua is lobbying the government to support children in care until they're 21. Some of the things that we have to deal with are homelessness, poverty, straight away, you know, instantly you're in poverty, um, welfare dependency and a life of crime. People say everyone has a choice of what they do. Hell no, not, not in this way. All you've done your whole life is just being fueled with this negative, uh, you know, negativity that pushes you down that path. Rejected by the system and their families, the teenagers struggled to control their lives. I became like angry, you know, toxic. I became a toxic person. And then you, you get to, I got to a point where I was just sick of it, you know, so I tried to end my own life. I was abusing drugs, self-harming, and really hit the bottom, eh? And it was from there, it was either end my life or, or, or sort my life out. And for me, well, you know, I mean, the issues that I had were too big for me to sort out by myself. But it's what happened to his friends that hurts Tupua the most. Three teenagers who left the care system, confused and rejected by everyone, committed suicide. Just changed, you know, just, just weren't the people that I used to know and um, distanced themselves away from everybody. Um, I hate the subject. <laughs> Well, one of them went back to his mother's house, knocked on the door, you know, thought that she'd be happy to see him back. She just slammed the door in his face and it just crushed him. So he went to the social worker and the social worker said, you're 17 now, so you're not on my caseload. That there channels a lot of anger, eh? a lot of hate. I called out for help, didn't get it. And that's just a young person, you know, crying out for help. By a system that's supposed to care. <laughs> Funny that. Yeah. Tupua received help and changed his life, but he's focused his anger on Parliament, where he's speaking to politicians on behalf of children in care. You know, every child wants the same basic things, a safe, loving, stable home, with nice people, good people, people who care about them, give them time. Come into my house. Pim, are you and husband Shane, are caregivers based at Dingwall. This is where I feed Dingwall. 
Our fun, happy, bad conversations happen. <laughs> they look after six children in care. Four of them are Māori. When they first come in, that's what we always try to work on, is gaining their trust and also them trying to trust us. Because once, once they trust us and once we trust them, then everything else should fall into place. We're going through to our playroom. They just know that they're in a safe place. They know that me and Pam are people that would look after them and keep them safe. Pam and Shane aren't typical caregivers. They're young and not related to the children. This is our meeting room. It's such a rewarding job, what we do. You know, the smiles on their faces are a reward, and that's what we see every day. Security, when they just feel so safe, that's confirmation that there's love there. How important is culture to you for the kids? The Māori children that I have, I want them to have the experience of a marae, you know, the hangi, the food, um, going into rural places, and, you know, because we hear a lot of my the body children are talking about they're up north or down south, you know, they're eerie. And I want the children to have that experience just because we're Samoan. It doesn't stop us from wanting for them to learn that. Mm. It's important. This is the courtyard where the kids play and they play handball and ride their bikes. Well, one the child there. The government plans to stop multiple placements and keep a child in one home, even if they're not related to the caregivers. I like this one. This one's got a nice, tidy bed. She's an artist type, is she? Yeah. But Tupua believes families should be helped too, so kids can return to a safe, loving home. She's amazing. She is. You've got to have that stability from the start. The idea of a placement for a certain amount of time, heck no, they're, they're kids. Put them somewhere stable, you know? They, they've got to learn to trust and get to know people. Tupua says society judges surf's kids, labelling them while they're in care and when they leave, but doesn't take any responsibility for how the state looks after them. We all grow up in the system, and in a weird way, it, 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 creates, it becomes a part of our identity. And it's not just um, the way we were raised in the home, it's the stigma from society, you know, everyone surf's kids, trouble. Hey, they're just innocent children crying out for help in a way that not normal children do. Now, they're born victims of circumstances, yet they're treated like this, you know, the, the antagonizers and the people creating these issues. It's sad and it's stupid. These little four, five, six, seven, whatever year olds are responsible for putting them, their lives where they are, you know? Tupua will hold child, youth, and family to its promise to put children at the centre of their policies, where the they should always have been. Because I'm new, my mum and dad kicked me out, and they're not good at looking after me. You know, I was quite naive and, and, and aggressive towards social workers, caregivers, but then I actually realised, you know, the system isn't just failing young people; it's also failing caregivers and social workers, and. Um, Oh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to those people who are working in our, in our um, care service, you know, and properly providing for young people. Life shouldn't be so hard for the 5,000 kids in care. They're also entitled to a childhood filled with fun, love and laughter. But their journey is needlessly complicated by adults when all the children say they want is a stable, nurturing and loving home. It's a vitally important issue. And the final review on the overhaul of child, youth and family is due out in December.